Every time you turn on the light switch or switch on the kettle or the TV, we make use of alternating current. It's a specific type of electricity that's in the mains electricity uh, that is something quite ingenious. So let's have a look at what AC is all about. In our lesson today, we're going to first of all review DC, which is direct current. Uh, then we're going to get into AC and see the difference between the two. Then we look at the mathematical side of AC and we use something called RMS values, root mean square values. Then we're going to understand, well, why do we even bother with this whole thing of AC? Isn't DC much easier? And then we're going to wrap it up and make sure that we understand all that we've talked through today. So first of all, back to DC, direct current. Now DC, as you may remember, flows in one direction. Okay, so the voltage across the battery uh, is the same voltage across the resistor in the circuit and the current will be flowing from positive to negative. That's the way we take conventional current to be. So uh, when we are looking at a graph of the voltage, if we're considering a positive voltage, it remains constant the whole time. That could be, say, from, from a battery in a torch. It's a 1.5 volt battery. So the average voltage is simply constant. It's whatever V might be. Similarly for current, uh, current, because the voltage is constant, current is also going to be constant. So once again, super simple, the average current is just I. So then if we're looking at the power that's delivered to that little resistor there, power, according to the equation, is simply the voltage times the current. Boom, so easy. Okay, so that's just a quick review of DC. Let's get into the slightly more complex world of AC, alternating current. So same sort of circuit, except we've taken the battery out and this time re replaced it with an AC source uh, with the voltage across it as before and the current begins to flow. So now let's have a look at the graphs of what an AC graph, AC current graph would look like compared to the DC. So first of all, the current is going to flow in the one direction. Let's take it as same as before. But it's not constant and this is the difference. Have a look here. So you see it increases and then decreases back down to zero again. Okay, it's almost like a car that pulls off from the robots and speeds up and then slows down as it gets to the next robot and stops. Okay, so now something different happens. This is completely different to DC because we have the switch. Okay, and the switch now means that the alternating current is going to go in the other direction. It alternates from one direction to the other. And let's have a look at this curve. So now it's like the car sort of reversing and then slowing down at the next robot. So a bit of a strange thing for a car to do, to go <laughs> That's But that's literally what the electrons are doing. They're going to be going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards in the wire. Okay, they don't really travel very far. But nevertheless, the energy does get there. But this presents us with some interesting maths because now, as you may have seen from the shape of the curve, the voltage no longer being constant is actually a sine function. As you can see, that's like a sine curve. Okay, so you don't, don't stress out, don't worry. Okay, we're not going to be doing some deep trig here in, 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 uh, in your science, but we do need to understand a couple of things because how now do we decide, well, what voltage is this thing? I mean, if we took V max, for instance, let's say that that maximum point that it reached here was 100 volts, all right? Could we say, well, that's 100 volts AC? Well, it's definitely not the same as 100 volts DC because DC is like 100 volts all the way. <laughs> but AC only reached 100 and then it slowed down again. So the maximum maximum that it was was 100 and therefore we can't say it's 100 the whole way. So actually the maximum is not a good way of representing the numbers of what this voltage is. So we say, well, what about, um, what about average? Let's take the average voltage. This presents another problem because remember that um, the 100 volts that it reached up at the top, then it went back down to zero and then it went down to the other end where it was minus 100 volts. Okay, so it went from plus 100 down to minus 100. Now, what is the average of plus 100 and minus 100? Zero. Okay, so now that is really complicated because that would mean if we, if we substituted that into the equation, it means that the power is zero as well. And clearly, there is some power being delivered to that resistor. Otherwise, these light bulbs wouldn't be coming on right now when we turn on the switch. So average is also not a viable way to look at how we do the maths. 
it leads us to this whole thing that we mentioned briefly earlier, RMS, RMS. So let's get into that. What does RMS stand for? Root mean square or the root mean squared values. Now, I'm going to take you a little on a, on a little mathematical journey. Again, don't get stressed out if you, if you find this a little bit complex. Maybe just watch it again and then again and then again until you do get it. Okay, no, you don't have to. But as long as you understand the concept that, you, that we come to at the end, that's the important thing. So here's our, our little AC voltage there. And um, looks a bit like a sine curve. There's our maximum point that we could read. Let's just call that, um, let's, let's call it a value of X for the meantime. All right, so that's our, that's our maximum point there. Now, if we took the average, it's going to be zero. If we took the maximum, it's too much. So we need something in between. And what we do, the first step is actually to square it. If we turn sine squared into, or we turn sine into sine squared, what the effect of it is, is it makes everything positive. Like x squared. Remember that plus x times plus x is going to give us x squared. But minus x times minus x is also going to give us x squared. So as I said, it, it does the awesome thing of bringing all the values into the positive space. So the first step is to square it. Second step then is to then take a mean of our new positive squared value. So we take the average um, of those. Now that's a real average. It's got a value and it's very much the average of what we've been having a look at. So now we've got x squared over 2. And that's our, that's our average. So maths is good. We're on our way. But that's not a real value for the, for, for, the, for the voltage because it's been squared. It's still in the squared state. So we need to unsquare it. Now, how do you unsquare something? The opposite of square is to square root. So we take that whole expression and we square root it. So to give you a feel of what that might look like, we've got the square root of x squared over 2. And of course, when you look at this from a mathematical point of view, the root of x squared is simply x and the root of 2 is root 2. So that leads us to an, um, the equation at the bottom here. Our vRMS is the square root of the mean of v squared. All in all, the conclusion of this whole journey that we've been on is that what we all we need to do is to take that vmax, remember that was what we represented over here, and we divide it by root 2. So if you remember nothing else of this mathematical journey, Remember that equation there. VRMS is equal to Vmax over root 2. Okay, so let's look at all the, all the equations that we might have. You've got these on, on your formula sheet, by the way. Um, there's the VRMS is the Vmax over root 2. And the IRMS, root mean square, is the Imax over 2. And remember those two, just as a little recap, they represent the, the value of voltage that is equivalent to the DC voltage that would deliver the same power. Okay? And the RMS current is the value of the, of the AC current that would deliver the same as uh, the, that value in DC. Um, do some examples um, with your teacher on these uh, to really get your head around what that actually means. I might just take a moment though to clarify what that means for say mains voltage which is 240 volts. Now that value is actually the RMS value. So we can do a calculation to work out what the actual maximum would be in its cycle. So taking that as the RMS, we can put on the other side of the equation Vmax over root 2. Okay, Rearranging it to work out what Vmax actually is, then is 240 times root 2, which when you put it into a calculator will give you 339 volts. So that is in fact the maximum that our mains electricity could reach in any given cycle. But on average, we take it as the RMS average is 240 volts. Okay, so just a quick recap of the, the DC formulae that we use for power. There's P equals VI, P equals I squared R, and P equals V squared over R. Now we have exactly the same formulae for AC it's just that we're going to always use our RMS values. Okay, always use the RMS values. So here are our AC formula. There's the P average that's delivered is VRMS times IRMS. The P average is IRMS squared times R. And the P average is VRMS squared over R. Again, those are all on your formula sheet, so you don't have to 
worry about trying to memorize those. Whew, there's the maths. Okay, so let's get into uh, some of the practicalities. Why do we even bother with all this AC business? Why don't we just use DC? It's so much simpler. Well, we'd have a major problem if we did try. Here we go. Imagine in Cape Town. Cape Town, there's residential needs for electricity, there's commercial needs for electricity, there's industrial needs for electricity. And let's imagine that the power is coming from one of the power plants up in Johannesburg. So there's our generator, and it's gonna send the electricity all the way across the Karoo, 1,400 kilometers. Now, down in Cape Town, let's say the predominant need is, say, 240 volts. That, that's, that's how it would be delivered to the houses and commercial, certainly. And we know that the power is given by VI, like we were looking at just now. 240 volts. Okay, now, we've got to deliver megawatts, megawatts of power. It's an enormous power that we need to deliver when you're thinking about the city of Cape Town. 240 volts is actually a very small voltage. I'm just gonna, it's an enormous power when you're considering uh, the, the whole city of Cape Town. And 240 volts is in fact a fairly small voltage. So because the voltage is small, it's gonna mean that to deliver that power, we need an enormous current. Okay, so we're gonna have a massive, massive current flowing through the wires. What's that gonna lead to? Well, it's gonna lead to power losses because those wires are gonna get super, super, super hot with all that current flowing through them. And all the poor little birds that stand on there, their feet are gonna get fried. And what if the wires are even gonna melt? I mean, it really, it really would cause major problems. So it's not even possible to transmit voltage at 240 volts. So we need some way of getting around that, okay? So let's have a look at a different scenario. This is what actually happens. We use AC instead of DC. And AC enables us to transform the voltage. We have a step up transformer at the beginning. So let's say we had a certain voltage and a certain current coming in from the power station. The step up transformer takes it to a huge voltage. And we're talking here like 200,000 volts. It's, it's massive, okay? That means, remember that's in the, the voltage and the, 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 the current are gonna be inversely proportional to each other. Look at that, if I rearrange that equation, V is equal to P over I. So V is inversely proportional to current. Therefore, the current is gonna be your tiny little current in comparison to what it would have been. That is very advantageous because then as it flows through the wires, there's way fewer um, uh, heat, heat losses along the way. Now, when it gets to the other side, we can't take those hundreds of thousands of volts and put them into our kitchen. The kettle's just gonna blow up. So uh, we then step down the, the, the voltage on the other side back to whatever we want, in this case, 240 volts, and then the current comes back up again, but that's fine because we're into the neighborhoods by then. So that's, that's what um, AC electricity is mainly used for, the ability to transform it, step it up, transmit it through a long distance, step it down on the other, on the other side uh, to reduce the power losses. Okay, so this is the bright idea really behind AC, and this is the key thing you can utilize this in your exam. Let me just clear this out the way for you. Um, okay, you can say that, why AC? Because AC electricity allows us to transmit power more efficiently over longer distances. Okay, fantastic. So that's a quick overview of AC. Um, quick review, AC Current uh, basically is current that goes in both directions, usually a sinusoidal curve like this. Second thing is then with that forces us to use RMS values to get a real value for what that current or voltage might be. And the RMS values are equivalent to the DC current or voltage that would deliver the same power. Okay, you've got those formulas. Um, then the last thing is why do we use AC? Because AC electricity allows us to transmit power more efficiently over longer distances. Good, well I hope that helps your understanding of AC. Uh, once again, do some practice questions. Those are gonna help to consolidate all these ideas. Good luck, cheers.